I, I, I want to thank the, the, the various panelists for the contribution. Uh, it's, it's well appreciated. I, I just want to start with the bishop. You see, it's the first time that I've heard a preacher when a church service is finished is, uh, criticizing both the sermon and the congregants to say that you are not uh, living according to the word. That's the comment for the bishop. I listened attentively to, to Miss Beatrice Mtertwa. Thank you very much. She's very passionate about her work and I would not expect her to say anything different from what she said. Demonstrations, where are they being banned? Doctors are being uh, denied the right to demonstrate impunity. Government must walk the talk. That's what I expected to say. But I have to say that I indicated that as a government, there are certain milestones that you can't take away that have happened. I believe that when Comrade Munangagwa became president, a lot of freedoms, people would say whatever they wanted, what they could not do. I remember demonstrations that were held before August 1, very peaceful demonstrations. And I, I, I've map-filled about one of them Shingi, where we have one of our supporters, uh, very short, he joined one of the demonstrations in a sea of red. He was wearing our green. And it was very peaceful, and they loved him. Nobody touched him. Come August 1, out of the blues, buildings were on fire, roads were barricaded. That was not Sanupiev. And it was certainly not the president. He had said, let's coexist. He even sent people to bury Trangirai. And when they were there, we, we received reports we were in cabinet that uh, a certain group was in trouble. And, and the then Minister of Home Affairs was requested to get out of the cabinet meeting and direct the Commissioner General to send reinforcement there. That was uncalled for. But when we started, Demonstrations were peaceful, and this is on record. That happened in Arad. It only there was a turnaround in October, unexpected. That's my 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 response to uh, the to council to say that government's position is we are in a transition, and we expected that uh, we. The transition, we know that it's not going to be smooth, but we started off positively, where people could demonstrate and, and there was no interference whatsoever. I, I listened attentively to, to, to my commissioner here. He's stating his case about what he's supposed to do as, as Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission. Certainly, we don't interfere with their work and uh, there are times when I quarrel with him. And when you quarrel with the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission, it shows that they are doing their job appropriately. You, I, I don't have to, to, to agree with him on every time. I, 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 I want to thank Justina. We indeed want to work with civil society, but what we don't want is sponsored civil society to fight the government. We want positive contributions, like what uh, Comrade Chris Mutrangwa said. We should not be fighting and destroying our house and expect to sleep at the end of the day. We won't have anywhere to sleep. So we, 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 we believe that we should uh, work together. I, 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 I've heard of issues where civil society have targeted incidents of torture, these are allegations that I have not been able to substantiate. And, and I, I, I would not want to speak about something that I have not been able to substantiate. And, and, and issues of sexual assaults, uh, we, we have made appeals, the police, Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission, I even spoke to him to say that 
if they don't want to go to the police, can they go to the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission? <coughs> we did not get anyone. On abductions, I honestly want to believe that there are people who are conducting this for their own ends. I'll give a good example of the good doctor. He announced his abduction. Firstly, he said, I'm going to church. At the end, it was found out that he, it, there was no church. He never indicated where the all night was. And he, he, he had the abductors had the, the liberty of allowing him to send a message that I've been abducted. He announced his own, uh, his own discovery. I listened to him speaking on, on, uh, on Studio 7. He never accused anyone. He just said, I've been found. My friends are coming to get me. And he left. He found a scholarship. And now he's going to study for his postgrad. Perhaps that is what he wanted to achieve. I do not know. He made the necessary noise to award him a scholarship. And, and, and probably that, uh, I, that is what he wanted to achieve. And so far, nobody knows who abducted him because he never accused anyone. He announced everything. It was only him who knew. And, and I, I do not know how you, if you are in your own house and you leave to go to, to, to a church meeting or to your girlfriend's house, what the police can do under those circumstances. I just want to, to, to speak about the young man who is very animated, very good at accusing others without detail. I'll give an example of the, of the maintenance of peace and order bill that he alluded to. By the way, he doesn't sit in parliament, so maybe he doesn't read the answer or follow parliamentary proceedings, so I forgive him. In Parliament, there are two ways of progressing. Either you do it by consensus or you divide the House. And this is on record. We passed MOPO bill by consensus at 4 a.m. the following day, which was a Friday. And if you go, if you go and check the answers, there were very positive contributions from Honorable Putti, from Honorable Biti, Sekala, and when we had a contentious clause, we would congregate at a corner and say, what do we do with this clause? And we would agree. And once we had agreed, I would then announce that, no, we are going to amend it uh, in the following manner, and we would proceed. At the end of it all, at quarter past four, Honorable Biti addressed the MPs and applauded the spirit that was exhibited in that house. This is in the answer. The sad thing is, when he met his colleagues, I believe maybe the, the Jacob is one of them, he then met in about 10, but the answer captures what you would have said in the house, and it captures everything. So I, I, I do not want to believe that Mopo was passed by ZANU-PF. There are several contributions on record in the Hansard that were made by MDC. And at the end of it, I even thanked them for the contributions that they made. So it's not correct to indicate that uh, that law was passed in the manner that he said. I forgive him because he doesn't sit in the House and does not appreciate uh, the issues that were raised. As for IPA, I do not know why he is criticizing a, a, a bill that is still to come before Parliament, where he can even submit his contributions to improve it. My understanding is the media fraternity have held several workshops to ventilate issues in these bills, and everyone is going to be given an opportunity. You can write to Parliament. And I, I, I know that I, I, I will be there to steer it. I have never refused to accept any reasonable contribution. And when I'm in Parliament, the President empowers me to change if I believe it's reasonable. And everything that is reasonable, we have done it. So I, I, I believe that let's not criticize issues that have not been done 
and, and, and be animated and be, be devil's advocate who want to criticize each and every step. I gave a disclaimer to say that any transition will never be smooth. But what it needs is we have to walk along, all of us, and say what is it that we want as Zimbabweans. But if you have a negative attitude, I thank you. Honorable Minister, I'm not done with you. Uh, Minister, the, the, is, uh, the, the rapporteur's um, um, summary of his visit, there is a sense there that there are some very critical issues he has raised. One of them is the excessive use of force by the state. The other one is that there is allegations, that is, there is evidence to some extent that there is state-perpetrated violence. I want to hear your comments on that. Thank you very much. I, I had, I'd left that out. I just want to add that when, you, when these rapporteurs visit countries, they go and speak to everyone and take what they get from the people and com comply a report. So what, he what the rapporteur did before he left the country, he wanted to just give an appreciation of what he had done to reporters but that is not the final report. Before the final report is produced, I spoke to him, you send us a report for our comments before the 15th of December. So those are allegations and they are not facts. And when he has sent the report to us as government, we'll be able to comment and then he will send a final report having had regard to what our side is. So what he did, he just gave a cursory look of what he was told by people and not the final report. The final report, according to, 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 to the U Human Rights uh, Commission, is he's supposed to send the report to us and then we input our comments. Then he will consider what we would have said and what others would have said and produce a final report. So I, I, I do not want to believe that I can comment on the contents of what he said in that press statement before he sends us the report that he is going to send. We will then address that. The next question that I'm just trying to see the critical ones that the Montlante Commission um, uh, recommendations, where are we? What is the process of monitoring what has been done, the issues that need to be addressed? Please give us an update. What, what is going on now? What, what has happened? Thank you. What happened is the president set up the commission, like what has been alluded to, and they produced a report. And then the president then set up an interministerial task force that I headed to look into the recommendations of the Motlante Commission, the Observer Mission Reports. And we did that process, and we submitted our report to Cabinet on the implementation plan. And some of the recommendations that are there, we've taken them on board. The Motlante Commission did not say the police shot someone. What did you say, Minister? They acknowledged that there was shooting, but they didn't pinpoint to say that the shooting was occasioned by the police. I'll give you an example. Those that attended the, the hearings, there was an audio. Somebody was on top of a roof shouting that somebody is shooting from that end. So for us to conclude that it was the police that perpetrated the shooting, Without, without a proper investigation and, and indicate that the commission said the police is not there. I've read the report. It doesn't say the police shot. But it indicated that those that perpetrated the shooting, the, the state must take measures. 
And that is what we recommended in our committee that perhaps we need to have thorough investigation and identify those people with a view of ensuring that justice is done. And we, are, we, take, we took on board some of the recommendation regarding the victims of the shooting to say that we need to do something in terms of those that were injured, in terms of those that lost their parents with a view of ensuring that they are taken care of. And that is the process that is going to be, happen. And the Minister of Labor is now seized with that to ensure that he comes up with an, the necessary instrument to ensure that those uh, victims are taken care of. So all that is now going to happen uh, in the context of our recommendations that we made to Cabinet. Last one. Third force. There was a raising there of, um, there was a question that was raised that there is a third force that could be responsible for abductions. And um, the recommendation was has there been any investigations? If there have been, what has been the findings? Because, you know, when you enforce impunity on a particular issue, you also enforce mistrust. So what, what can you tell us what, what is being done to dismiss or to deal with these abductions and also the allegations around that is being perpetrated by a third force. Thank you very much. I kind of touched on it when I gave the example of our good doctor that I knew when he was abducted. When you speak of a third force, it's more or less like you are talking of a terrorist organization. The modus operandi is that they don't do it publicly. So I understand what she was saying to say that, can you identify and deal with that? Surely that is what we want. We want to identify that because we, we are the state. And when something happens, and it's not us who has done that, because we are not in the culture of abducting people as a second republic. And people claim that they've been abducted. So certainly there is somebody who is doing that, those abductions. That becomes a third force. That is exactly what we are saying, that the state didn't abduct anyone. And nobody has identified any state agent who has abducted them. And we are saying to ourselves, if it's not the state, then there is a third force that is organized, that is doing this for a specific purpose. So I, I, I would not sit here and say this is what the state is doing in order to identify the third force. In security matters, you don't discuss them in open. You allow security forces to deal with the third force in the manner that they have to do. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The first question is about Zesa, women and children. Kutivano enda kuchikayo pakati peo siku. A, shikayo shi kumusha, shinya insa ajo kusenza pakati peo siku sakawe kumusha are not affected by this. But... Ndino pa kumusha then I have to answer that this question pertains to a specific situation that we found ourselves in because of climatic change. We didn't create the climatic change. We only came in two years ago, and when we got in, we never got a handover that indicated to us that we would uh, uh, inherit a situation where Kariba would be as low as it is now. So it's a situation that we have had experiences and we are trying other energy sources besides relying on hydroelectric. As you know, we had expanded 
Kariba, and we now have Kariba South, but because of the level of Kariba Dam, we ended up in the situation that we are in. And it's not only peculiar to us, Zambia, for instance, they are having load shedding because of Kariba. So we, 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 we are now trying other sources of energy to ensure that we can mitigate around this issue of electricity. So it's not something that we can do anything right away, but it's work in progress to ensure that we explore other ways. We are now going to have to invest more in solar. We, we, we believe that that's the way to go. We have a lot of sunshine here, and, and, and we should harness that energy and convert it to, to energy that we can use in our homes. Admittedly, we all have to endure this process until we get out of it. The second question about the, the, the issue of those that went to Maldives, I do not want to comment on issues that are before the courts that I am not well briefed in. And it's, it's not something that I can do. I am not a prophet or a guru that she was in court today and was denied a passport. Surely I thought that question uh, is not for me to answer. On domestication, I, I want to invite him to, to come and discuss with me the relevant uh, uh, conventions that he believes that we have not domesticated and are not covered in our, and I will duly do that. Uh, xenophobia, when you are in Zimbabwe, it is the duty of the state to protect everyone who is in Zimbabwe, regardless of whether you are a, a, a Zimbabwean or a foreigner. If you are in South Africa, it's the duty of the South African government to protect everyone who is in South Africa. So if xenophobia happens here, it's our duty to protect. We have to rely with the South Africans if violence happens there. The issue of doctors uh, that she mentioned, the right to, to health, doctors are on strike, they now have to do certain work that they were not doing as mothers. Yes, the doctors are on strike, it's their right. There are processes that are happening, negotiations, and I do not want to dwell too much on it uh, because it's something that the relevant minister is seized with they are, have been negotiating. We have identified uh, some of the shortcomings in the system that we believe needs to be addressed. So that is going to happen. In, in, I, I would not want to go into detail as regards that, but indeed the doctors are on strike and a relevant action is being done in negotiations to ensure that the situation returns to normal. I thank you. Thank you very much. The inference was the women who come and 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 I think let's not dramatize. The, the we know that we have shortage of electricity, but there is no need to dramatize. But my Kumusha I think okay. we need to, to, to have our facts rather than to say yes. I do not have statistics. Certainly, I have not had reports of women that were raped because there was no electricity in the Vanga Vachenda Uchikai. Thank you very much. The first question that we were part of the First Republic. The person who brought change in Soviet Union was part of the system. That's all I can say. So it doesn't matter whether you are part of a system, but when a new leader comes, he comes with his own policies and he moves the country in the direction and according to his vision. Comrade Japa, rights of prisoners, I agree we need to do more 
in terms of ensuring that our prisons are improved. But I believe that what we are doing at the moment, we are meeting the standards that are, we are supposed to. But we can do more than that. Rights of political prisoners, we had an election, people were elected. It means that they are political rights. Cultivation of confidence, you don't cultivate confidence when you are attacking each other. So it takes two to cut tango. I, there was then the issue of sabotaging the nation. I agree with the speaker. And I must say that it's very painful when people believe that they are targeted sanctions. Business people out there cannot transact internationally they are subjected to a lot of questions when you want to transfer money from Zimbabwe to do business. And at times the transactions do not go through and our business people will tell you this is happening. And all this was brought by people. And I believe that we have to start working at a law that will ensure that those people who are not patriotic, who brought this suffering to us, are taken to book and we craft a law along the lines of the Logan Act. I also want to say, moderator, before I end, that sometimes let's just not say issues for the purposes of pleasing others when we are lying. Honorable Beatty actually thanked me, but he said, Honorable Beatty, thank the MDC. This is on record. I'm not talking about something that was not said. He wasn't there. I was there. And I'm talking of something that I heard him say. And I do not know which answer he is reading. Certainly it's not our answer. But the long and short of it is, let's not be agents of of, of lying. Let's just say facts as they are. Whatever was done, there was acknowledgement. And that acknowledgement was from every, everyone who was in the house. And, and, and I believe that uh, we need to say the truth and, and stick to the truth. Where people have done something that is good, you need to acknowledge. I acknowledge Honorable members from MDC who made positive contributions. Uh, and, and, and I believe that in, the, in like manner you are supposed to acknowledge where people have done something that is good. And I, 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 I will request. Thank you very much. I just want to thank everyone, more specifically the organizers for this forum, unfortunately. Like what the good bishop said, uh, as soon as we finished giving the first, it was ejected into a contestation of which part is uh, better and not deal with issues that speak to the question at the end. It's very unfortunate. And I. I, 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 I subscribe to some of the issues that the bishop indicated that we should perhaps focus on those and uh, do that, as well as what Commissioner Mugwadi indicated. Uh, but uh, I, I also want to acknowledge the contributions by everyone and hope that this discussion will continue and we'll be able to find each other. I, 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 however, I have to, 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 to just comment that I indicated that we are in a transition and, and uh, following up on what uh, Comrade Mutrangwa said, we had a bombing where the president was almost killed and some of our people were killed and everybody has remained silent as to the identity of who did it. In the same vein, when we say that there is a third force that is doing these abductions, 
the hand points at the state. But our, from our own position, we are saying we need to relook at this. And I understand what uh, Justina is saying, that our police is very good at cracking. This is a police under transformation. And you, you do not expect the same level of police that you are referring to, to the one that is under transformation to be a human rights-based police the way it is. I'm sure everyone would appreciate that when the Second Republic came in, there was a change in the way the police were doing their policing. And, and we, we believe that moving forward with the realignment and trying to do things in a different way, we'll get there and the cracking that you are talking about, you soon be seeing it. I also want to speak about alignment and indicate that when the Constitution came into play, we concentrated a lot on alignment. But if you go to the interpretation philosophy of the Constitution, it enjoins everyone in interpreting any law to have regard to Chapter 4 and the rights that are in the Constitution. So what it says is, if you look at any law, when you are interpreting it, go to the provisions of the Constitution and try to interpret it having regard to that. And that, if our courts and everyone was doing that, we would not be uh, very much concerned about alignment, which I believe is a very necessary uh, process, but we, do, we are not constrained because we do not have alignment if everyone was following what the Constitution is supposed to do. But the process of alignment, I believe it needs to be done and, and, and finished. Command Agriculture, the New Republic came, it has now been taken back to the banks. I was hoping that uh, Beatrice was going to allude to that and say the Second Republic have done something that is very good, that perhaps the financial institution that have the expertise of handling funds and uh, screening uh, those that want to borrow have been given the mandate to do that. As for the MDCs in town, I agree with him. They have done a tremendous job of ensuring that we have cholera in most of our towns. I thank you.